the information you're getting is perfect. So that's how we're able to do all the testing in the lab. So you have 24 hours lab <laughs> well, recently we just got named the new multi-purpose crew vehicle. So Ryan was before the crew exploration vehicle. Now, we've been going through some challenges over the last year and a half, and finally we've been actually um, announced a couple of weeks ago that Orion will be the multi-purpose crew vehicle. So now we are being um, funded by NASA to continue forward, and we have that. Has never slowed down in our design, implementation, and testing, and so now we're able to continue that progress forward, and in 2013, we're expecting to launch this vehicle, if you allow me to show you, from here, so this vehicle wow. is actually now going through all the environmental testing, and so that environmental testing is going to allow us to ensure that this vehicle is ready for space, uh, space flight, because we have such extreme temperatures mm. in space, you know, from cold to hot, and then making sure that the pressures are good, um, and that it, it doesn't have any leaks and it's completely sealed, and that, and then once we launch, we're looking to make sure that all the avionics, all the cabling, all of the hardware, all of the systems operate in those types of environments. So we test them on the ground, and then we t do this flight test. We're going to orbit one and a half times before we bring it back down, and it'll be full of different sensors so that we can test everything and collect as much data as possible. What kind of launch vehicles are you considering for the first for this module? This launch abort test was done with just the launch abort module, right? Right. There wasn't a launch vehicle. In the no, vehicle. no, it was just the crew vehicle on a pad with the launch module, but the launch abort just on the top. The next one is going to be done out of, out of uh, Florida, Cape Canaveral, and we are planning to launch this um, on one of the already existing vehicles, so uh, I don't know if they've decided if it's going to be like a Delta IV or, or one of those similar vehicles. Um, it is not a human rated vehicle, so we are just using it to get our flight test into space so that we can test it and then collect our data while we build whatever uh, vehicle, launch vehicle NASA chooses to go with. And then that will be a human rated vehicle, and then we'll be able to launch this with humans on whatever vehicle they choose to go with. On that human level, do you, uh, if, just say in 2019, people that, just like any of us, want, want to take a trip into do, do you have to be able to be fit and uh, everything in your physical realm with the mental? Well, we got to me that and not being an astronaut <laughs> and not being an astronaut. I am not sure, but I'm going to ask. I'm going to defer that question to Barbara, Miss Barbara. Hi. This is Barbara. She's wonderful. How are you? But she's going to help me answer that question. She would like to know that if 2019 when we start flying people into space, would Average person be able to fly into space physically. Are you talking about 2016 when we have a crew flight? 2016. She's talking about regular, regular civilians being able to fly into space. We we don't plan on doing that. We we are using trained astronauts right now, but that could change. That can change. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. But you know, we're very diverse with our astronaut crew. You know, men, women, international astronauts. So it's. Um, I understand that, but I was just thinking an average person. You would like has, to go. Yes. <laughs> right. I would too. And I, th I think they should fly photographers and artists and uh, writers and engineers and teachers. Well, <laughs> The, the people that train for space, as you well know, they have to they have to be able to understand the rigors of space and, and be able to you know withstand. They tell you like you go into a simulator and get you prepared all the different and and psychologically. Right. You know, the that, astronauts that train for years really. just to be able to know, do flight because you know we're, 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 we're ready to go. I think you're right, and I think that we should allow that. Funding, you know, right. We're taxpayers, and we should have a shot at it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I think in the future they're going to bring us. Um, have more, you know, we have teachers and we have veterinarians. I think that you're right. Somebody just mentioned how fast we travel. I'm with you. I'm with you. And that doesn't have millions and millions of dollars because we don't have that. Well, okay, so it depends on the mission that it's flying on. So if you're in a low orbit mission like where Space Station is, and they come to range, it's going 17,000 miles.
you're coming back for something like the moon, the lunar trajectory, when you re-enter, you're going about 35,000 miles per second. And then as you're going wherever you are, because you're being accelerated and decelerated by the planet, you know, there are all these ranges of speed that you're making out. So one of the pictures I looked at, when this was at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California, being prepped for the test, they were moving it from one building to another to do a test. And one of the Lockheed F-22 fighters was just taxiing behind <laughs> So I think I'll take a quick picture of this fighter. Maybe I'll take a picture of this fighter. One that looks like a rock. But you know, John Glenn, when he returned to space. He was 72. So we'll go 35,000. So when we're going to get the Joy Strike Fighter. And then he's taking pictures here. Saying hello. And then he's taking pictures here. And the trajectories are really interesting. You know, the moon orbits around us every month. So it's in a different place every day of the month. So the vehicle's designed to be able to safely return. So we've worked out all of the burn sequences to come back. And every one is unique for that 28-day return. And there's this great animation of each of those orbits and the three burns. We are. So what's interesting about all this, all this um, building and exploration is And like the first test that we'll down in nine years. And if you are at the moon, you can get back in three days or so. And if you're at Mars, you can get back in nine months or so. So you just keep expanding as you have a system of reliability, capability, and confidence. you can do. Let's crawl, walk, and run. Did you get a little copy of it? You know, there's plenty of it. Is this the first launch board system of its kind? How does it compare to other launch board systems, like a Saturn rocket? So, similar to the to the board system, I'm sorry. I was using it to... This one is, it has a control system on it. The, the earlier versions, it just had a motor that pulled you away. A list fix. This is yeah. computer control. And then, and then a, a pitch motor, they called it, that would turn the vehicle around. So it just fired for a preset amount of time, it burned its propellant, and spun it around, and you hoped you got the heat shield going forward. Right? This has a whole control system on the top, so it has closed-loop control, the jets are up here at the point. Cool. They do this maneuver to turn it around exactly to get the heat shield for capsule separation. And then you separate the launch you separate the it comes off with exactly. the jets. And then you can get the parachutes out. Then you know it's stable. Heat shield forward, parachutes in the slip stream. Are the parachutes here or is that They are right here in the forward bay cover area. And this flies off, exposing the parachutes below. So they're up in this area, up at the top, to sort of see the, the support where the yellow... So you can think that those have launch rods come down, and that's a structural member. Also, you can yank this thing off. What sort of cables do you yank with that? <laughs> well, it's it's all structure. It's all metal structure. There's a truss. Put on the parachute. Like it must be. Oh, Kevlar. You know, part of it, part of it's steel. The risers that are right down near the vehicle are steel, and then they go to Kevlar because Thank it's lightweight. Thank you. Like that's structure. really cool. Wow. But the steel ones are more abrasion resistant, so where they could get chafing on something, yeah, they're stronger. Thank you. It's pretty wild. And how do they bring it back? I mean, where do they put the, the middle of the orange vehicle and the Well, so the way we'll go out, we go out on a mission. There is a service module on the, on the back that has the commodities and uh, um, water and, and gases and, and battery power and such, and a big engine on the back. And so when we go out into space, there'll be a, a system called an Earth Departure Station. It's very nice to meet you. It'll push us out of lower and orbit up to where we're going. And then we've got the propellant and the engines to bring us back. So we'll go out on an orbit, slow down around wherever the mission is, be there for the time period, then fire the big engine to come back again to re that separate that service module so that we can make this system as small and light as possible. So the heat shield can be smaller and lighter, the parachutes can be smaller. Because you have to take all that equipment, like dragging landing gear around on an airplane. You've got to drag all that equipment with you. And the mass of it, you have to accelerate and decelerate as you're getting out to the planet. So that's how we get out to the back. Variety of different suits. And they've been testing to see how you get in and out of the vehicle with the suits on, and then the off nominal, which is coming out of the top hatch, and then and then having to come down the side into an inflatable.
So they've been practicing that as well. Prepare for every scenario. Yes. What's this worth? What's the value of it? In case you want to put it on eBay or something, right? I do not have an answer for that. I don't know. <laughs> Millions, though, I'm sure, right? Like, I don't know. We're very excited to be on this program. I'm very excited to be working on the space industry. And then working on the next exploration day. Yes. Can't help but be excited.